Welcome to another Numa of Now podcast with Richard Blankenship. I stand as mountain amongst mountains. I hope that you learn to stand as mountain yourself, to stand in your own power, to recognize, recognize your own truths, and to share them with the world. So what I'm about to do is one of my more difficult readings, so I again ask for patience. And we are a very free form flow system. You know, there's not an exact science here. What, what I kind of teach is this idea of unrestricted visioning. So the whole idea of design science, but the designing of your own life, the inside science, the resource insider stuff. But today is November 22nd, 2020, and today holds a special place in my heart. And for personal reasons, I will just briefly say that sometimes people enter your life that deeply touch you and you remain forever changed and sometimes those people aren't with us for very long and I lost a very very special individual uh, 10 years ago today and the reverberating effects in my life have continued in a positive way and in negative ways but within the darkness is the light Within the traumatic response of losing somebody so dear and special and precious and innocent, you know, it's really, it's really important today for me to sink into this knowledge that, and this remembrance that we are eternal beings. We are already eternal. It's the illusion of the body in its mortal coil that gives us a false sense of of limiting experience we are already all things i like the words you know i like the idea that we uh, are spiritual beings but we have a body you know we are spirit but we have a body our bodies are vehicles that's why they call it in car nation um, re in car nation rather so yeah it took me a second to realize I missed a syllable there okay so for Sunday November 22nd 2020 I welcome everybody here this is going to be I'm just going to read as long as I can because today's a special day but this is going to be a difficult reading I have a hard time with the the words and the pronunciation. So again, this material is available for free online, but I'm reading out of this book, Emma Curtis Hopkins, High Mysticism. I think this is our third episode on this, and I am only on page four, which just goes to show how dense this material is. It would, it'll probably take me a good year to get through this book with you, and that, that's probably a conservative count. Uh, let's see. So we're on page four, and I finished up with a Plato quote last episode. Hopefully I can arrange these files in an according arrangement, according to number. But we're just not there yet. So let's see. As down the sides of Hermon, the unapproachable, trickle cooling dews to refresh the hot valleys, so falls a reviving miracle of newness upon the children of earth. When they penetrate beyond the stars to him who proclaimeth forever, Behold, I make all things new. As balm from the trees of old Gilead in far past days soothed the hurts of the Jews, so that the day spring from on high doth visit them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide their feet into the way of peace. Nothing we can do or say or think can quench the downfalling reconciliation and empowerment, the preserving and healing, while to the high edict responsive, 
we lift up our eye to the hitherward smiling countenance of the lover ever with us, the Lord of hosts, his name. He, abiding as the great different, gives peace which nothing can invade. His benedictions confer restless might. Therefore, behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hands of their masters, so our eyes wait upon thee. This deathless visional faculty is our only achieving power. It is not dependent upon thoughts of mind or bodily actions, though to them it yields itself day by day in omnipotent servitude. Left to itself, it flies away to the Elysian fields, its rightful resting place. So eagerly did the untaught seers of the past long to have this immortal faculty find its rightful direction. They willingly practiced mortifications of the body, denied self, affections as well as appetites to give it freedom. But it asks no such sufferings on the part of the mind or body to give it power to tame and glorify them. It asks only that their will, uh, it asks only their will that it go homeward. It is the immaculate of us, though age and decrepitude have cramped the flesh. Senility has sapped the mind and sickness has blinded the eyes and thickened the ears. Yet the wrecked old man lifts up his sightless eyes and smiles. With the immortal and ever young mystical eye, he beholds things celestial. And then he drops the robe of clay, hastening to be identified with his joy-giving vision. Had this eye been lifted to the mountains of help in earlier days, he would have transfigured and renewed his flesh instead of leaving it to the moth and the sod. All the other faculties in daily use are maculate. The mind can become vitiated. The body can become diseased. But though this all-encompassing sense can bring back on its beams the nature of that upon which it may be stayed itself has received no tinge of similitude the same out of itself the same in itself aseity and then the notes on aseity is from latin a b s e which means quote of or from itself Unquote. With it, we are to repent, to return. And now commandeth he all men everywhere to repent, declared Paul to the Athenians. Repent and turn away your face from all the abdo- abominations which your own powers have made. It was Ezekiel's abdomination, admonition. The eye of the soul, which is literally buried in an outlandish sloth, sloth, (laughs) S-L-O-U-G-H, is by the right science lifted upwards. Plato. And this is that return which hath divine reward. Return unto me, and I will return unto you said the heavenly voice to Malachi. The mind cannot return, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. The footsteps of flesh cannot return, for as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my ways above your ways. For these are but the distance of the strengthless, from the stronger, the short-lived from the eternal, and the fantasy from the like to itself only. Hermes Trismegistus. But the heavenly vision rests her feet splendor, fleet splendor, in the high source 
from which the flawless and immortal soul sprang forth. I have given thee an eye divine with which to behold my power, the Upanishads. By returning the celestial faculty towards the heights, we are taken above the thought circuit to the watch. Watch ye therefore what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. All miracle workers have practiced the principle of watching. Moses, the genius for leadership, speaks unto the nation of slaves. Stand ye still and see the salvation which the Lord will work for you. For the Lord shall fight for you and ye shall hold your peace. And this is forever inevitable, inevitably the prayer of the supernally inspired leader of men. Look down from thy holy habitation, from heaven thy dwelling place, and bless this people. And they shall pass in safety through red seas of difficulty, though all the powers of mind and matter oppose them. And this is forever the joyous chant of the liberated people. He looked on our affliction and our labor and our oppression, and he brought us forth out of darkness. What a mighty hand, with a mighty hand and with an outstretched arm. Elijah, the seer, stood with gaze transfixed towards a sephiric host in the mountains around about Samaria. They that be with us are more than they that be against us, he said to Gehazi, who watched with him. And though the king of Syria had sent soldiers to slay the lonely prophet, they were not able to hurt him, for mystic defense transcends the sharpest swords. It is not promised. I will give power to my two watchers. New powers. Miraculous powers? St. Bernard, the abbot of Clairvaux, rose to almost supreme power in his church by, by persistently gazing toward the twelve stars in the diadem of Mary in paradise. He urged others to do likewise. If the winds of temptation blow fiercely upon you, look to these stars if you find yourself in a sea of trouble, look to these stars. If you are tossed on the waves of pride, ambition, or envy, look to these stars and invoke the name of Mary. Hosea, making note of such as St. Bernard cried, they returned, but not to the Most High. Savonarola pictured before his inner eye a monastery for a holy resting place from turmoil and strife. Its monks should all be men come not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And it is recorded that so influential did the outcomes of his vision grow, the great citizens begged to join the Dom Dominicans, the righteous possessions, Idle songs and fightings ceased on the streets of beautiful Florence, Italy. With his inner eye on the commanding form of a warming visitant from the shores of mystery, Savonarola drew order out of chaos and established a new form of government in the city of the Medici. In a time of dearth and danger, loaded wheat ships arrived and the enemy's troops were not able to reach the people under the protecting ministry of Savernola the seer. All the forces of the universe cooperate with vision towards beatific ideals. It is not till the eye descends to prowl among the viciousness and crimes of men that war and martyrdom succeed. So, descending, did Chrysostom, the golden-mouthed, 
forget to show the glories of the heavenly land, and he perished in exile. Jeremiah lamented so profoundly over the mistakes of the Jews that he was martyred in Egypt. But Elijah never lost his high watch, and even his bones were left giving. His whole pathway on earth was strewn with miracles. For no weapon formed against the comrade of angels can prosper, radiating forever what he assimilates. Hufland secretly eyed the unspoilable region of spiritual health in his deceased patients, and they recovered. The hidden actual readjusted the molecules and atoms of the manifest to harmonize with Hufland's untaught visional practice. Gordon noted that those who reported to him their procedure while demonstrating miraculous cures mentioned seeing with their inner eye some gesture or image symbolic of or identical with the healing about to show forth. Maxwell watched the fleet, ethereal light which he discovered filling all quarters of the universe, and he declared that by watchful use of it, the ailing among mankind might be made whole. The difference between the great men whose names have attracted the attention of mankind is to endurance and in memory and strength in perpetuating their doctrines has depended upon uplift they have given to the hidden eye whereby the mind receives elation or depression. Socrates came not to teach any positive doctrine, but to convince man of the ignorance of his mind. His highest science got no higher than that men acted than that men act wrongly because they form erroneous judgments. Upon being told that they were that he was the wisest man, he said it probably was true, for he knew enough to know that he knew nothing, while no one seemed to know that much. The ignorance of man's mind is a dark zone to fix the all-collecting eye upon. No joyous inspiration fulgurates from that Ethiopic field. Okay, we're going to condense the re- we're going to stop cease the reading there for today. And, um, yeah, I just wish you all a beautiful Sunday of insight, of allowing and giving yourself permission to rise and shine and to reach forward with the heart, you know, heart first forward. Give yourself permission to stand as mountains among mountains and to seek the inner eye the divine, the eye divine, not the two outer eyes, the singular. When thy become, you know, when, yeah, thy become one, when two become one. So we can go on and on in these kind of general circular circular thoughts, but I think the point is clear that it is time to stand. It is time to rise. It is time to claim our our personal freedom, our personal power, and to continue to encourage those that are that are steeped in a vortex of fear and desperation to fellowship with the hurt and the broken. And today I take it upon myself and I take responsibility to acknowledge the beauty in you. If I may be the lone voice in this ether of loneliness, I welcome you. I I give you an energetic hug. I come to you in compassion. I gaze into your soul by looking into your eyes energetically. I encourage you to use the power of the gaze in your daily life to really sense into that energetic signature that, that lies right behind the eyes or in the eyes as gateways to the soul, as portals of knowledge and intelligence and wisdom that are beyond words. I love you all. 
peace profound in the Numa of now.